and welcome to my second van build idea layout series. This is gonna be all about the kitchen because according to my van build pyramid, it's pretty important. Yeah, this is gonna be a little bit about everything just to give you an idea on what to think about when planning a kitchen. So I'm gonna cover a little bit about the build in general, about fridges, the whole water system like sink and pumps and storage, cooking options. There's gonna be a little bonus material. And if you wanna see a little bit more about one specific clip that I'm showing here, I'm gonna assign a number to that clip that I'm gonna show on the upper left corner of your screen. Then you're gonna look for that number down in the description below and there's gonna be the link to that video. Okay, got it? Good, let's start it. There are a few deciding factors and questions that you have to ask yourself. A, do you cook a lot? That's an easy one. Do you need a lot of counter space? Also, if you're two people, is it usually like one person cooking? Do you kind of need enough counter space for two people to cook? Needing to pass each other quite a lot and this can get stuffy. The size of your countertop and the size of your storage, these can all be modified. You're not in a normal house. This is prime real estate. You wanna make sure that two people can move naturally. And for us, we were squeezing quite a lot. Depending what kind of stove you have, you need to have counter space that is actually free. I went with this massive six foot countertop, which is kind of weird in a 10 foot van. This side we have our sink. Um, and plenty of counter space. It's really nice when we're cooking. Do you want a proper sink? Some people don't really care for it. Sink's just a bowl from Walmart, $3. And what do you need the sink for? How much water do you need? And how much storage for food? Do you kind of like to buy fresh and rather want a bigger fridge? Or do you want to buy a lot of not fresh things? Built wise, um, I see some people just get like a regular countertop from Ikea or I don't know where you Americans buy furniture from. I haven't really bought any furniture other than from Craigslist or so. Already ready-made furniture that depending on the on the van, they don't really have to change anything about it. They can just like put it in, it's square, it's fine, it's good. Or you can customize everything. It Yeah, it kind of depends, you know, on like the sink area the height that you need, like how deep it can be and everything. Sometimes you might not have all this flexibility to just use a ready-made countertop. One thing that really helps is having a lot of, I say this all the time, flip-up tables like this one. They just expand your counter space if you need it. I didn't really need more, um, but when I had more, when I wanted more, I just have the flip up cutting board as well as all of these mats that kind of fit on it so that I don't have to mix different foods together. Bench here, just to give us a bit more bench space. Um, it locks up. The workspace here can be extended with this heavy duty shelf. And yeah, if you have a tiny van, then there's always those, you know, back door little things. Talking about the fridge, there are a lot of options. A lot of them are quite expensive. Many people have the Dometic because it's really efficient and really nice. We have our fridge, which is pretty nice, well stocked. It's the Dometic CRX 110. So it's a Dometic fridge. It's about 55 liter fridge. You can just have a quick peek in there. Beautiful. We just kind of wanted to go a little budget. So we got an LP Cool fridge which are pretty much like very similarly efficient. And I feel like ours is pretty good. The only thing is that it can be a little loud when the compressor is on. I can't really compare it, but we have this one and it's worked well. Before that in the Astra, I also had an LP Cool. You know, it always worked, it never quit working or anything. Many people have um, like a top fridge which is good in the sense that when you open it, the cold stays in because cold air goes to the bottom. That's kind of like the only drawback of the side door one. Other than that, I feel like the side door ones, <laughs> they're just so much better. It's really kind of hard when you need to get to one thing. You always have to get stuff out before you can get it stuff. It's just too much hassle. Just sliding out, unlocking the latch, opening the lid, putting everything out, grabbing the thing at the very bottom, loading everything back, closing, closing the latch, sliding it in. There's always a big argument about power efficiency. 
I don't believe any of that because the amount of time you need to keep it open and grab everything out, you lose all the, uh, all the cold anyways. There's also not a lot of 12 volt options with the door. I put the fridge actually right here in front because sometimes when you're out camping or whatever, I wanted to reach into the fridge and grab something. So I actually have the fridge right here. This is an isotherm. Uh, it's the clean 85 model. For our fridge, we went with an isotherm Cruise Elegance 85 model. Uh, they're pretty great. It's got tons of room. Truck fridge, it's about two cubic square feet. I went with the truck fridge because it was about half the price of like a isotherm brand, but it's the same exact product. 12 volt truck fridge. Uh, we found it to be really great. There's even a little freezer in there. I did go with the truck fridge. It's 4.2 cubic feet, it's massive. Oh, this is definitely a good deal. If we've got a Vitra Frigo C-115 refrigerator. It's actually made in Italy, but just over four cubic feet. It runs on 12 volt while you're boondocking. We've got a big fridge from Thetford. It's a 12 volt fridge, especially made for vans. Very compact, but it's huge from the inside. It's got a freezing compartment got drawers for your fruits and veggies. I do want to note that it's possible to just buy an AC fridge and uh, just use it with an inverter if you have an AC system in your van because those are so much cheaper and um, apparently also energy efficient. I don't know how much but yeah just uh, putting that out there that that's an option as well. Now let's talk about the sink. Do you want the sink to just freshen up your face, clean a mug or a tiny pot? Then yeah, you can use that cute little salad bowl option that many people have. Da, 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 da. Does it fit? No. I think it's very impractical. If you have dishes, if you have like a cutting board or anything, this it's just... It just gets really hard to wash anything in a tiny sink. I feel like that's what many people have often regretted in their van builds. It was very important to me to have a very big sink. So I went with the classic farmhouse style. I, it was one of the biggest ones that I could find on Amazon that was still not like too big. With the sink I have about 30 gallons of fresh water and it will last me about 30 days because of something I added onto. On here is an aerator nozzle so I can uh, fill up water bottles when I need to or if I spin this around it'll mist the water. That saves so much of my water every single time. So the aerator is called the altered nozzle. It's literally just this nozzle right here that has multiple attachments that can connect it to almost any faucet. A nice little faucet and sink. If you look closely at our sink, there are no round corners in the corners. I do not recommend that. It makes it quite a bit harder to clean. If we want to do dishes, that we actually have some space to put them. And I didn't want to have a small camper sink. I want to be able to wash dishes and even wash my hair in here. So that a lot of RVs opt for quite a smaller sink, but for us, we really value and are really enjoying having a large sink. One of those reasons is that I can wash my hair at any given time. Well, here we have our deep sink. So it's nice and deep so Patty can use it if she, in an emergency if she wants to wash her hair in there. We went with a black sink from Ikea. We love the way it looks. We paired that with a black faucet. And a quick word on faucets, you can just choose whatever you like. It You can connect anything to everything, whatever fits your needs. Our cutting board just sits right on top when we drive and that keeps everything nice and tidy. And a little top tip I think is just get a standard wooden chopping board just screw a couple of little batons in there uh, and it will sit in there. You can use it as a chopping board and you can drive with it in there, it won't go anywhere. Don't install it the way we did it. Make it that it is a little bit recessed so that when you cut it out, you have a little cutting board that you can put on top and it's not gonna move. That's why I added a couple of suction cups. We have a small undermount sink. We soldered our own copper pipe faucet and we have a marine foot pump to pump water through the whole system. I absolutely adore my sink. Uh, I actually just got it online and it wasn't much more expensive than um, a normal sink that you'd buy for a van. Just glued in with some super strong glue to keep it in place. The sink we sourced from Turkey and I just really loved it because it's iodized copper, which then ties in with the copper taps. We got a sink with running water. 
it's only cold water we did not install a boiler in our previous one we did have a boiler but we didn't use it that often we have a two and a half gallon hot water tank it takes a lot of power so we really only turn it on when we know we're gonna have a lot of sun or if we're gonna be driving for a long time I actually just went with cold water cold water is great but doesn't make for the cleanest dishes we'll probably eventually make a video on things we regret that might be one of them. I actually think you would rather regret not having any space next to your sink to put your clean dishes. And now for the pumps. So there are three options. The hand pump. Do not use a hand pump. Here's just a little demonstration of how the sink works here. <laughs> Pretty simple overall. Every time I saw someone trying to do anything with water with a hand pump, I felt really sorry. <laughs> Second one is foot pump. I am all for a foot pump. So much better than a hand pump. Often like a little bit more expensive, but there's the, the baby whale brand, which is super good and reliable. Uh, marine foot pump. The reason why we decided to do this was many fold. I've had that in the Astro and it never had a leak. There's also a bigger size. I would have probably put that in there, but my husband wanted the third option, which is of course the electric pump. If you want to see what we did there exactly, I have a video. Um, yeah, and that's also where we keep our big stove. There's like pros and cons to both. Like with the foot pump, of course, you kind of need to make like a little ugly hole for the foot pump to pump it up and down. Pump it up, no arms! You've got to pump it up. That's a and, um, but, but yeah, I think it's pretty nice because it really makes you save a lot of water. You really have both hands and you can like fine tune how much water you need exactly. Oh yeah, there's kind of a third option, which is an electric pump with like a foot switch, you know, so you can... That's pretty cool too. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. Also a pro of the foot pump is it's super quiet. With the electric pump, you know, however you are using the silencer kit or have foam down there. I'm always gonna hear it somehow, like from the outside and of course from the inside. If it's night and you want some water, can get a little loud. You also have to winterize it. With a foot pump you don't really need to do that much or it's like way easier. If you need big amounts of water, if you want to have an attached shower nozzle or something like that, then of course electric is best because you can't really pump and then and then shower. With the arms now. A little weird and yeah there's actually more pumps I have this thing in and see the tube that i did and it's going to be nice and secure and i could still turn it i really only use it when i'm not driving not working great one for fresh water one for gray water both 15 liters this is the water pump it's a tiny one but it's not expensive if it breaks, it's easy to fix. And it also goes straight up to the sink, so no unnecessary long pipes throughout the van. If there's a leak somewhere, it can only be here. Let gravity be thy pump. I didn't want to bother with a water pump, so I've got a gravity-fed system. Just turn it on, water comes out. I do have a gravity sink. Basically, uh, this is my water tank that slides out. So just put this away as well. Um, that slides out under, over the, over the sink, and then, boom. Water storage, and what kind of water containers? Do you want like one large tank, or do you want to have all these little, like five to seven gallon tanks? That also really depends on if you have a shower and if you have like a very high water need then you probably need those big ones. Usually you have to um, put them somewhere else in the van, not right by the water um, area. And so there's a lot of lines, so there can be leaks, there's more connections. Our 30 gallon water tank, um, this is where our fresh water is. Our water fill up is right here. This is where we put fresh water in. And then the drain is right here, intake right here. Inlet for the water tank 
is inside here and we do hate it because it's always messy there's always some dripping that goes under cabinetry when you fill up the water in a colder months you just need to open the first door first to open the second door so that means all the accumulated heat is just immediately it's got the pump in there that pumps our water up from a tank water tank that's uh, underneath okay and then underneath this area is also the grey water tank for catching all that grey water. water. 95 litres of fresh water, which yeah. is one of the good things about having the Sprinter is that a lot of RVs are made from Sprinters. So there's a lot of water tanks that fit perfectly to the little shapes underneath the van. Um, and then the grey water, um, that was just some stormwater pipe that I screwed together, like stuck together and try to fit these weird shapes. Filling them up wherever you are might be a little hard because you always kind of need a hose and sometimes Depending where you are, you can't really get a hose. Maybe there's always faucets outside where you can connect the hose and it's super simple. Maybe, probably, I don't know. Having the little containers, it's a bit of a hassle too to fill them up, to be honest, because you kind of have to like take them out and carry them somewhere. And so in that sense, I guess they're even. They're even, I have to admit. But you are way more flexible in terms of where you get your water from. So you don't need to have like a faucet. With the small tanks, you can have three little tanks there. Come down here, you'll see our water um, storage situation. So we at any time have three five gallon fresh water tanks. So those are our blue ones. And they run off into our gray water in the back there. Here's the grey water tank for the sink, which is also accessible from the outside. Please note, in the last two clips, the grey water tanks were see-through. That's really important. Make sure it is see-through, because if not, it's always going to be a big guessing game. So don't do what the guy in the next clip did. Bonus if your fresh water is also kind of see-through. In the back here houses our fresh water. The front one here is our grey water that matches. We went with a removable grey water tank, but at the same time, it actually drains throughout the bottom of the van. We're big fans with how we set up our gray water tank. We've heard horror stories of how often people have to empty theirs. Six gallon fresh water jugs. We're using a five gallon bucket as our gray water tank and it's set up to be able to drain from under the van into a dump station. So it's a two step filtration system. That helps us feel confident in knowing that we can drink water that we grab from anywhere. One of the things in the van that we can't live without because we use it every single day is our Berkey tabletop filter. It has a little spout here on the side that we can put something like a hydro flask under. I do have my fresh water tank. This is on a restaurant place. It's glass, which is really nice. And you can get a stainless steel spigot if you want. And then to recharge, you just pull out this little lever and then you just slide the glass out. The top comes off. <laughs> And now really quickly for the cooking options, you have like a built-in gas stove kind of situation that just is in your countertop permanent. The Ramblewood gas stove, which I really do like. We've got our two burner stove top. So that's a Summit series. Uh we went with a Gasland stove top, which has been awesome for us. We've got a two burner, the Medic cooktop here. And this is kind of a unique, galley system we've got here. On the top, we've got a full work surface. You can do whatever you want up here. Uh, but when it's time to cook, you can just pop open this and you've got a two burner gas stove here. We got a two burner hub. They have a built-in cooktop. This is a Dometic two burner propane stove. They do have a propane tank mounted underneath the van at the back of the van. Then there's also ovens, which, huh. It's a Fitford oven and hob. We have three hobs on the top and an oven and grill in here. It's a nice and big oven. You can cook a pizza in there. It has a full-size oven. You can bake pizzas. You could even get a turkey in there if you wanted to. Let me see if I can open this one. I have um, a little oven here. Don't ask questions. I do use this oven. It's plugged in all the time. That's a nice feature if you like toast or if you want to make some french fries or something. Our stove is from Furion. It's a three burner propane stove with the oven range. Uh, we like the stove. We haven't used the oven yet. The thing with those is you need a sealed propane tank somewhere in the van. Um, so you need to like build a box for it. Um, 
seal it, make sure there's a hole through the van so that no propane like adds up and makes everything explode in case there's a leak. There's actually a hole through the bottom of this locker, through the bottom of the van, because propane is heavier than air. If it was to leak, the propane would leak not into our van, um, you know, making a very dangerous situation, but through the bottom of this locker and through the bottom of the van. I'll tell you that it is propane that fuels our stovetop there. Um, and that's fully bolted in, guys. It's not going anywhere. Another cabinet where we store our gas bottle. It's a six kilogram gas bottle. There's a propane tank. It's right here. It's a little one gallon and it's in a little safety box so that it's safe. I have a 13 kilogram LPG gas bottle. There's an on off. Um, so when I'm driving, I turn it off. Um, when I go to sleep, actually, I also turn it off. So for the big propane tanks, I guess you need like a seal thing. For the small ones, I mean, we just have them here. I don't know if that's good. I don't know. We also have our propane. Uh, we turn the propane off every time that we drive and it, there is a vent down below. Um, so if any propane does decide to leak when we get up to different altitudes, it'll go outside the van. Uh, we kind of chose that option because we've seen a lot of people make the whole vented lockers and they're super safe about it. And we've also seen people just throw a 20 pound barbecue tank uh, in their van or they just have tons of those little one pound Coleman canisters um, just lying around. So we figured somewhere in between is fine and we're totally comfortable with it. And we do have a fire extinguisher under here. It's propane, the cylinders are in here. That's a one pound it's bottle. It's refillable. Did you consider and then there's also little carrying stoves, you know, that just regular butane or like smaller propane stoves from Coleman or whatever. The good thing with them is like you can also cook outside on a random table and all that. So you have more flexibility, but they do take up some room. You always have to like set them up before you can do something. That's a little bit annoying as well. If you don't want any gas, which I totally understand, then there's of course induction stoves or like some other electronic cooking plates and whatnot. That's a good option too, for sure. Because I also didn't want any built-ins. So like a built-in cooktop or a built-in, you know, oven or whatever it may be. I knew that I could just cook by using portable instead of built-ins. I can put everything in drawers and I can just take it out and cook or whatever that may be. Instapot and inductions are the way to go, in my personal opinion. We have a double burner. Um, it works really great. The water will boil within like one or two minutes, maybe. Fold down induction cooktop. When building out the van, I knew I didn't want any kind of propane in here, especially since, since I intentionally put in a large battery system. But I saw the biggest problem was that people were cracking their induction cooktops from things falling onto it. So I decided to figure out a way to have it fold up and fold down very easily. Behind that is just more spices and condiments. So it's just super helpful when I'm cooking, just to have everything in one spot. So that's the kitchen area. That's not fully it yet. There's still this little bonus section with some extra little tips. This magnetic strip. So at first we were a bit concerned that the knives and things would fly off during takeoff and moving around, but they've stuck quite nicely. Magnet strip. No, the knives don't fall off. <laughs> Our biggest tip is get rid of your hanging fruit basket. One thing I will note is that sometimes your bananas get a little bit bruised. Your bananas will be ready for banana bread and everything's just gonna get smushed. We got this from, I think, Home Goods and it works great for all of our produce. Every drawer that I have is lined out with like a carpet. Two reasons why I did it. Number one, aesthetics, and number two, not noise reduction. It actually really helps. Yeah, I have um, storage for plates and uh, old cutlery. Um, so yeah, this was taken just from a friend's dishwasher. He was getting rid of the dishwasher. I was always worried about driving and plates smashing. Yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with my dresser. <laughs> keep all my cutlery in here um, yeah and other like little bits and bobs to finish off the kitchen space we added this little DIY pantry this is the food waste uh, compartment which is just basically a IKEA like glass dish like food tub uh, with bamboo lid and ceiling which basically will just slot it in there and then while we're preparing food you can just throw the waste into that and then dispose of it later with like food waste organic waste whatever 
you really have to be careful not to attract rodents um, get rid of it frequently try to seal all kinds of open dry foods and possibly store them in some upper cabinets i can still access my kitchen and these have little rails and little areas to slide things out it's pretty messy now and i even have like special little cup holders it's just to kind of keep things you know in place so that they don't break when I'm driving. So I do like this. It's a timbre door. I got it on Craigslist and then just kind of built the, the box around it. So that's kind of how that works. Uh, wallet, glasses, keys, camera gear that I try and use every day. And then this, when I slide it around. So thanks so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful to you and that it gave you some insights and especially that I sold you on Fit Pumps. <laughs>